This video contains spoilers for Earthbound, Earthbound Beginnings, Undertale, and Lisa. Just warning you guys now so you don't get mad. Every video game starts with a creative process, and that creative process has to start with an idea, and these days, said idea is often inspired by something. In an industry that has over 30 years of history, there is a lot to look back on that can influence your work. The youngest generation of game developers grew up playing video games, and the experiences they had playing those games are likely going to inspire them. Nowadays, you got games inspired by all sorts of classics. Freedom Planet was inspired by Sonic, Axiom Verge by Metroid, Shovel Knight by Mega Man and DuckTales, the list goes on and on. This inspiration usually drives the gameplay and the visuals. You like this kind of game as a kid, so you're gonna make this kind of game as an adult. But there's more to that inspiration than having it simply influence a game's look or design. These classic games have a sort of soul that's not always captured when simply taking after them. Take I Am Setsuna, for example. It's heavily inspired by Chrono Trigger, but it completely lacks the spirit, the juice, the life that this legendary and timeless game is so well known for. How do they copy the gameplay design one for one and still manage to produce such a bland and soulless game? The answer is simple. It's because there's more to inspiration than just copying something. It's one thing to have gameplay and visual design fueled by inspiration, but creating a genuinely enjoyable and lovable game that's a whole nother thing altogether, but if there's one game I've seen so consistently inspired games with such passion in them, it's Earthbound. There's been tons of games inspired by Earthbound, but the three in particular I had in mind are Undertale, Lisa, and Yume Nikki. These are three games that have made me feel ways many other games haven't quite managed to make me feel. They all have something powerful about them, whether it be a cleverly structured meta-narrative, a brutal journey that stabs you in the chest, or a lonely dream world full of aimless exploration and surreal experiences. But what exactly is it about Earthbound that people find so inspiring? What is inside that 16-bit cartridge that touches the hearts of these developers, sparking something in their mind, allowing them to someday create something brilliant. I've always considered it one of the few series that has somehow moved me in a way that video games don't normally do. I personally have played the entire Mother Trilogy. I first experienced the whole thing back in high school, played 1, 2, and 3 in that order. I wanted to start with Mother because no one ever talks about the first one, and I'm sure I'd never go back to it if I didn't start with it. While it's the second game, in the Mother Trilogy that boasts the trophy for inspiring these games, I think it's important to go back to the series' roots. After all, the original title is a more basic foundation. I mean, looking back on Axiom Verge for taking inspiration from Metroid instead of Super Metroid, building off the more basic formula, allowing the game to grow into something more unique, something that wouldn't have been as likely to happen if it were to go off of Super Metroid, the more fleshed out and already realized experience. And things aren't too different here, at least not from a story standpoint. Earthbound is practically a remake of Mother. I mean, we've got a young boy going on a journey to stop a faceless evil. On this journey, these kids will do things that kids don't normally do. We go to stores, do shopping, do our banking at an ATM, visit graveyards, factories, dangerous places that our parents tell us to stay away from. It's a game about a child filling the shoes of an adult, experiencing these adult-oriented situations through the eyes of someone very naive and innocent, and in trying to fill these shoes, things don't feel right. It feels as if we're not ready, we're too young, we don't understand the world just yet. I couldn't help but to feel odd during the scene where Anna confesses her love for Nintendo. I mean, they're kids, and it comes out of nowhere. Is it simply weak writing, or is this young child doing what she thinks she's supposed to do as a kid in the shoes of an adult? Fall in love on this journey, because that's what happens in the movies, and kids often imitate what they see on TV. Monkey see, monkey do. Monkey see no evil. And there's a lot of evil these monkeys are trying not to look at. And on the contrary, Queen Mary, an adult, is stuck in her childish fantasy world of Magicent. Perhaps the kids need to play the 
the adults here because the adults they should be relying on are too busy being kids. Okay, so we've got a theme here. Children in adult situations. Someone so innocent having to deal with something so mature. We're able to trace this theme back even further to something that has inspired this series that everybody finds so inspiring. Mother was meant to take place in an American setting, so at the time, Itoi and his team looked at Peanuts as inspiration. What better representation of children in America than Charlie Brown and his friends? It's really not hard to see the similarities. Many characters in the original Mother very closely resemble the cast of Peanuts. Mother heavily draws from the art style of Peanuts, it's not hard to see, but that's not where the similarities end. Peanuts may be a comic about children, but the comics often depict Charlie and his friends in fairly adult situations, which of course is made comical by the fact that it's kids trying to act like adults. People very young trying to emulate what they think it's like to be a grown-up. The classic example is Lucy's psychiatric help stand in place of what should be a lemonade stand. The series has explored rather mature philosophies, which isn't always comedically delivered and would serve as the inspiration for other comic strips like Calvin and Hobbes. But what makes Peanuts so charming is the way it's delivered through these children that don't entirely understand what they're saying. When you have emotional problems, it is usually because you have no outlets. You need emotional outlets. I need emotional outlets. Earthbound is a series about exactly that. It all comes from Peanuts, and understanding that, I think, is key to figuring out what makes this game so inspiring. Earthbound Beginnings plays with this concept, but it was Earthbound that really ran with it. The situations are more extreme, scary even, at least it would be to a kid. And to top it all off, we finally discover that the faceless evil we've been chasing is the physical manifestation of fear itself. And the only way to stop it it is to remove the brains from our skulls, put them in robots, send them back in time, and abort it. Abortion is quite literally symbolized by the vaginal entrance, the ovary-looking walkway, but most of all, Gygus' final form being the spitting image of a fetus, a child in its earliest stage of life. Even the terrifying, unfathomable evil residing in this game is to a child, filling the shoes of a role it doesn't understand. It's as poetic as it is shocking. Talking. There's something strangely alluring about a game with such a childlike wonder that can also disturb us like that. As the case with Undertale, I'm sure we all felt the shock when we first saw Flowey's final form. I find great value in this kind of shock value. When it's done right, it can be very effective. I mean, I remember the first time I ever saw blood in a video game. It was Kirby 64 of all things. When I finally got to Zero Two, the final boss, I was terrified when I saw blood spurting from its eye upon dealing damage to it. I was really young, it scared me. A lot. Yet, Zero Two quickly became my favorite Kirby villain. Why is that? What was it about that shock value that drew me to this character? It's the same for Yume Niki. From the beginning, it looks cute, we're exploring our dreams, but it's not uncommon to find things that are disturbing. Perhaps the closest example to Gygus would be Teiko Fusen, a blob-like creature that has a very slim chance of appearing in the White Desert. People theorize that it was designed after a birth defect called Twin Reversed Arteal Perfusion Syndrome, or TRAP Syndrome for short. Don't look it up, the pictures aren't pretty. Given the game's Earthbound inspiration, I wouldn't be surprised if this creature too was based on a kind of fetus. Now while Undertale and Yume Niki draw from the thematics of a childish aesthetic being penetrated by instances of horror, Lisa takes a very different approach. Instead, the brutality is the main focus, with the visuals having an Earthbound flavor. The sprites have a similar art style, and those text boxes, there's no denying that they're straight out of Earthbound. Each of these three games games are very evidently Earthbound inspired, but it's not because of the way the game is played or because of how it looks, but rather because of the way the game makes us feel. It's not trying to copy something or create something similar, but rather it's something original that succeeds in making us feel in similar ways. It's not a different flavor of the same thing, but rather the same flavor of something very different. We're not talking vanilla ice cream versus chocolate ice cream, we're talking vanilla ice cream versus vanilla yogurt. The food's different but the taste, the taste is familiar. It sure doesn't look the same, but something about it, it's just got that same vibe to it. That's inspiration done right. 
Well, you know, at least according to this idiot. So what is it about Earthbound that's so inspiring? Personally, I feel it lies in the game's simplicity. The game's story really isn't that complex, it's just a simple journey from point A to point B. All the journey needs to accomplish is turning four children into heroes so they can beat the bad guy. The saying goes that the journey matters more than the destination, and that applies to Earthbound more than anything. Instead of a concise story, we've got a series of moments that don't necessarily directly correlate with one another. Subplots are started and resolved quickly, villains are introduced and quickly defeated. None of it is directly related, but in a way that doesn't feel disjointed, but rather that you're on a road trip going from one crazy event to the next. It's a series of bizarre experiences that these children are ill-prepared for. You're a little kid leaving your cozy home to realize just how weird the world is. And I guess that's how most people feel when they play this game for the first time. I don't know, there's just something about it, you know? Something there that just hits us all in the right spots, makes us feel all the right ways. I guess that's just Earthbound. Mother, honestly, is a much more fitting title if you ask me. I mean, after all, it's pretty easy to think of the game as the mother of inspiration.